Hi everyone, so two constants about myself are that number one, I love to travel, and number two, I'm incredibly cheap. I studied abroad in Granada, Spain about three years ago and traveled quite a bit then, and last year I was teaching English in Galicia, Spain, way up north, so obviously both those times I did not have a ton of money, but I still managed to find ways to still travel quite a bit, and I have vlogs about my study abroad experience, teaching English abroad, and vlogs of me in Spain, so I'll link all of those up here and also down below. So today I'm going to get into my top five tips for traveling on a budget. So let's go ahead and get into number one. So number one is related to the literal act of actually traveling. So there are so many forums online that can offer better advice on flights than me. So I'm not going to get into that. But my biggest tip for say if you have like a five hour long drive or bus ride or stretch that you would have to be paying on a bus or a train, I highly recommend doing blah blah car instead. So think of it a little bit like Uber, but for incredibly long distances. And these aren't people who are hired by the company itself. So say I had a five hour long drive that I was doing throughout Spain, throughout England, anything like that, I would post online and say, hey, I have three seats free. I'm leaving at this day at this hour from here to here. It's just $5 a seat for the ride. So it's just regular people who happen to be driving somewhere and they offer up individual seats in their car for travelers who want to travel very cheaply. So it's generally just a lot more pleasant than a bus, costs a lot less than doing a train or anything like that. I'd recommend probably doing it with a friend just because you don't technically know the person that you're getting in the car with but so obviously with any of these tips I'm giving just keep a common sense in mind so number two would be all the various different kinds of cheap lodging. So you have a couch surfing, which I've done a ton, and I can do a sort of couch surfing 101 guide if you want to. This is literally where for free people offer up their couches so you can sleep on them. Although sometimes they have a spare room, but that's more rare. So I'll go through all the different options, but couch surfing is good if you want to meet people and if you want a place to stay for free. Although I should point out you might be sending out 30 messages just trying to find a single couch you can sleep on where someone will actually respond to you. Hostels are great for also meeting people and it being cheap. And then Airbnb is really great if you want a little bit more independence. You want to be able to have your own room, but it, but it also often is pretty cheap. I will link when I went to Scotland to Edinburgh because I stayed at a fantastic Airbnb. I think it was 19 or 20 pounds a night. Well, I personally, out of all these options, prefer Airbnbs. I'm willing to pay 15 euros or pounds or whatever to be able to sleep in someone's spare room and have that key because I don't know if I pointed out Airbnbs you're staying at someone's houses although sometimes you can rent out the entire house I personally prefer that over couch surfing because couch surfing you're not necessarily being given the key to the house it's generally also expected you'll hang out with them quite a bit since they're just letting you stay there for free couch surfing really is for meeting people so, so it's really overall if you're looking to meet people or if you're looking to more so have independence my number three tip is to definitely check out staying in smaller cities versus just the bigger tourist attractions. So for example, in Spain, Madrid is quite a massive city. It's the capital, a lot of people travel there. Don't get offended if you are from Spain. I'm personally just not the biggest fan of Madrid. I just personally prefer a lot of the smaller cities like Toledo, Santiago de Compostela, Granada. Cities like that are generally a little bit cheaper to stay in and have, although I guess I should point out Spain's a bit of a bad example for this because in general, Madrid even is quite cheap compared to other bigger European cities. But even for example, places like Germany, I prefer the smaller cities much more often than I do the bigger ones. So I would recommend just Googling hidden gem, lesser traveled cities in, in the area you want to go to. Stay at one of those areas and if there is a bigger city nearby, you can always do a day trip there. For number four, we have free walking tours. This is something that's become quite popular over maybe the past 10 years or so, but, but it's actual tour guide companies, but, but the people in those companies just make commission off of tips. So if you are a student and you only can really offer three euros to that person, then that's fine. Don't be that person who literally doesn't offer them anything because this is their job. If you're in a bigger, more expensive city, if you pay for a one or two hour walking tour, it's probably gonna cost you around 20 euros or so, and they're not any better than the free ones. 
And finally, for my number five tip is to plan a fair amount ahead of time. Well, I know this might seem obvious, and I know you're probably already the type to do that if you're watching this video, but I've noticed a mentality with people my age in their 20s, 30s, who go travel, and when I do this in a group, often I'll find that no one has remotely anything planned out beforehand. And they just say, oh, I don't really care what we do, we can just walk around and meet people, talk. And I think that's good to do sometimes, but, but when that happens, I always leave whatever city or place I've been thinking, I missed out on seeing this, etc. I'm not the type who wants to wake up at 8 a.m. on vacation and do 50 things during the day, but just try and Google and plan at least two to three things during the day that you know you really want to see. Google if there are passes where say you can see three museums for the price of one, buy that ahead of time so you can skip the lines and have that out of the way. Google just top 10 free things to do in X city, or Google if there are student discounts. And I guess this more so has to do with just the people who view vacation differently. But if I were just going to do nothing, I would stay at home. I would just stay at home and watch Netflix. But so if you guys enjoyed these top tips for traveling on a budget, if you have any tips, please feel free to share them down below for everybody else so they can see them as well. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.